Why, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to a random review. I am Random Ross, and today I am reviewing Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. So again, this is written by Paul uh, Derm, Dem. And this time it is directed by J. Lee Thompson, starring Roddy McDowell, Don Murray, Ricardo uh, Montaldan, Montel uh, Natalie uh, Trumby, and Harry Rhodes. So this is the fourth film in the Planet of the Apes franchise, where it is now 1991. Within that time from 1973 to 1981, a virus from space has killed off all the household pets that are cats and dogs and in that time people have taken apes in as household pets as documented in the ape scrolls in the far future and of course they've evolved to the point where they've started to turn it into a slave trade and of course when an ape slave is being abused by humans, Caesar shouts out that they're inhuman bastards and of course with apes not being should apes don't talk they're just slaves excuse me and uh, of course that gets them into trouble and of course the ringmaster um yeah the ringmaster uh, armando is interrogated and unfortunately you know, plunges to his death when refusing to do a lie detector test and then Caesar sneaks his way into the slave trade where he plans to revolt and cause a revolution against humans but of course with one human that's you know, helped him named McDonald uh, played by Harry Rhodes he manages to talk him round speaking on behalf of his slave ancestors you know that this isn't the way and they should show mercy. So that's the story of this. What do I like about this one? Well, I like the future setting of it being set in 1991. I, li I like science fiction, classic science fiction that is set in the future and it's depicted and they and, and they believe that it's depicted like that. I don't know what it is about classic science fiction where it's set in the future. I just like that and it's only set in 1991. I mean, this film came out in 1972. But set in 1991. Again, the ape prosthetics are as good as always. They get a lot more extras this time to be apes, from chimpanzees to orangutans to gorillas. And of course, Roddy McDowell carries on the leading torch in this as the main star in it. We also get Natalie Crumby as uh, Lisa this time, a chimp slave. This time you can't recognise her, she's in makeup and she eventually goes on to become Caesar's love interest. Roddy McDowell playing Caesar, he's basically playing Cornelius, but hey, he's meant to be the son of them anyway. Um, but also, you know, he like leads the apes, shows them how to fight back. And of course, our human antagonists do get what they deserve. And of course, he shows them something that they probably never would, mercy. And now, I believe that the ending to this one, it was originally written as a much darker ending, like where Caesar does go through with killing the, the main villain. But, like I say, with them thinking at that time it was too violent, or it was violent enough as it is, they decided to change it slightly where Caesar, after making his, you know, speech, saying where there is fire, there is smoke, and from that smoke, my people will plot and plan for the inevitable day of man's downfall. But then McDonald makes that, you know, manages to reason with him. And the film ends there. Still dark, but it sets things in motion for the final chapter in this series. Um, but yeah, I thought this uh, remains, the, the, these remain entertaining. Uh, it's not as long as the others, but... Still, this was uh, actually th this was actually my introduction to the franchise. I remember being I must have been seven or eight years old. My dad had it on the Sci-Fi Channel. I was watching with him, and I was just amazed at the monkeys or the apes in this. You know, 
the way they all look. They genuinely look like actual apes to me. And many years later I would go on to watch the first one and watch the whole damn series. And Roddy McDowell in this puts on a great show. I like the futuristic settings we get. I like our human supporting leads, especially McDonald. He, he, he's a he's a good character, I think, and I liked him, and I like that he carried on in the into the uh, next film, which was Battle. So, yeah, like I say, this is a decent one, and I do enjoy this one. I had some good memories of it in my childhood. I will give Conquest of the Planet of the Apes a four and a half out of five. Yeah, four and a half out of five for that one. So there you go. There is my review for, you know, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. And also it's kind of, you know, this kind of like feels like Rise of the Planet of the Apes sort of rehashed it a bit as well. Yeah, we'll get to that one too eventually. Anyway, yeah, have you seen it? Feel free to share down in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Share with your friends, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and to hit that notification bell. I'm Random Russ and this has been my review on Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. So, until next time, I bid you all a goodbye, friends, goodbye.